So these plants right here, right here and right here, right there, they're all poison ivy. So there's a nice yeah. big, big lush growth of poison ivy right all along this side of the trail. This yeah. side doesn't seem to have any. So much why I love hiking so much. Yeah. Hi there and welcome back. Um, poison ivy was kind of just one of the hiccups that happened on that leg of the trip. <laughs> the last two videos we put out had to do with repairs and modifications, but we want to kind of get you caught up on... Um, on our actual traveling. The actual yeah. traveling, exactly. We're going around and seeing stuff. Exactly. Now you can see that we're home now. We've been home for um, about three or four weeks. And sorry it's taken us a little bit of time to get things rolling. Uh, we'd also like to say thank you to our subscribers and welcome to our new subscribers too. So, okay, so let's get going. Let's go back a few weeks to Devil's Tower and the Devil's Tower KOA. Yeah, we use that sort of as a base where we could uh, go and visit a lot of different places in South Dakota. Um, we, we had thought from everything we heard that because of COVID and everybody having cabin fever and getting out, that all of the campgrounds were going to be full and packed. And so we so, needed to get reservations. So that's why we just opted to stay in the one spot. I don't think there was one mm -hmm. time when the campground was completely that formed. we experienced for us on this this particular trip we didn't have too much trouble so speaking of the koa the devil's tower devil's tower black hills koa is in devil's tower wyoming and we really liked it as you can see yeah. from this video here uh we you know we did a little bit of a drive around it's bigger than i thought it's a journey too yeah. and sometimes they're not very big yeah it was big and it was right there by the tower it was they also <laughs> show uh, the movie and Wilson Cabers <laughs> every night. <laughs> every night they show it. We didn't go see it, but uh, yeah, they do show it every night it. there. But it was a great spot to to see the park from, and the 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 sites were roomy. That's us. That's us. Bye bye. They have showers and bathrooms and all kinds of stuff. So. A lot of stuff we didn't avail ourselves of. We were there to see Devil's Tower and the other stuff, and that's what we did. So it was a great KOA. We do recommend it, and it had very fast campground Wi-Fi, which we will talk about a little bit later. We stayed there, and we traveled out, and we went to see Mount Rushmore. Badlands National Park. Jewel Cave. Wind Cave. And the Minuteman Missile National Monument. So let's start with Mount Rushmore. <laughs> so years ago. Like in the 80s. In the 80s. As a family. In our RV, we traveled to Mount Rushmore. We tried. That trip in and of itself is worth a video, but we need our two grown sons to be in on it in order for it to tell it properly because it really is quite funny. Today, the park is much busier for sure, but it's really still amazing. The symbolism behind the figures is worth pondering. According to the National Parks website, quote, the purpose of the memorial is to communicate the founding expansion, preservation, and unification of the United States with colossal statues of Washington, Jefferson, Lincoln, and Theodore Roosevelt. And it certainly communicates that theme. Once we had the park stamp and sticker for my book, we headed out. We took off from there and um, we headed toward, I think, Badlands at that point. Yeah, we, we went, went to Badlands, Badlands National Park. Bad, Badlands National Park. That was really cool. And one of the very first things that we saw when we got into the park was this. Take a look. In addition to all those big one sheep, there was, of course, our little friends. The prairie, <laughs> the prairie dogs. dogs. We love them. I love them. Okay, enough of that. Uh, but we did see the prairie dogs and the just the scenery itself is yeah. really... Yeah, the, the formations and everything are really It's really impressive. impressive. It's really impressive. And, and we've seen a lot of different mountain ranges and things like that. And 
it's really different and yeah. definitely worth a trip. We we really liked uh, Badlands. It's it's a small park. Yeah, it's not big, um, super big, but it's and, really. Uh, we we met a new friend. Our Leslie was a, a traveler that we ran into. She is a nurse, and so we kind of struck up a conversation and. Now we follow each other on Instagram, which is kind of fun. So if you're watching, hi, Leslie. And uh, yeah, that's one of the fun things about traveling. You kind of get to meet people and um, and you can stay connected with them through social media, which is a lot of fun. So, all right. So Badlands, that was good. After we left Badlands National Park, we found out that we were right across from Minuteman Missile National Monument. Yep. So it has three different sites. The main visitor center, and that was open. We, we went in. Mm -hmm. You can learn about you know, how they set up these missile sites and everything. And at one point underneath all that quiet farmland in South Dakota was full of missiles. Um, not anymore. So that stuff's all gone. Uh, you do have to make a reservation. So you have to have advanced reservations to go inside and there's tour fees. Um, but you can do a self guided cell phone tour here um, and okay. so 11 through 20 so are about the control uh, facility control facility okay. and that's something that we didn't know i didn't think to check that ahead of time uh, but you need a reservation to go in and see certain sections if you plan ahead like i did not and uh, go on to their website you can reserve um, a spot in a tour where they'll take you in. We were not able to go in past these gates. We know? could see what was on the outside and we could read about what was underneath, but we couldn't actually go in down into the uh, actual facilities. Right. It was a good stop. And at least from what we saw, definitely worth the stop. So um, we also didn't plan to visit Jewel Cave and Wind Cave. We went there anyway. So, you know, let's, let's talk about that. Jewel Cave National Monument is one of the largest cave systems and maybe even the largest but they don't know because they haven't explored it all yet yeah they're still in the process of exploring it so it's enormous they just really don't even know there is some thought that it it and wind cave connect at some point but from what we heard they had not figured that totally they, out yeah yet. they don't know yet they don't know if yet. they do so, they haven't finished uh investigating all the places in wind cave either so right it's possible that they actually do connect. They're about 30 or 40 miles apart. Yeah. Now, it would have been much more interesting if we'd been able to go in the elevator. Yeah, but the, the elevator was broken. The elevator's <laughs> broken. And it says that right on the website. <laughs> there are some um, moderate to strenuous cave tours you can take if you sign up. Um, you have to sign up in but person. But you have to sign out in person. And I, you have to do that. At, is that at Wind Cave or? I think maybe both of them you have to sign up, sign up in person. Which means that you can't sign up online. You can't make a phone call and sign up. You actually have to physically go there, put your name on the list, pay for the tour, and then come back. And we didn't, A, didn't come early. We hadn't to planned to do for that. that. We hadn't planned for it. So we were not able to go actually into the caves at all. But again, if you want to go to these places, look online, see what the instructions are, plan ahead, and get there early in the morning, go in, sign up, pay for the tour, and then you can come back. There's a little town uh, that you can uh, go into and kind of spend, spend yeah. some time. It's kind it of It looks cute. like it'd be a pretty nice place mm -hmm. to spend, yeah, be spend an hour. Go have lunch and then come back and do, the, yeah. and do the cave tour. So, okay, then we went to Wind Cave National Monument. It was at Wind Cave that we had probably one of our funniest animal encounters. Uh, this one, maybe even the whole trip. We went to Wind Cave, and because we couldn't get in, we decided to go on a hike. Okay, so we're at the Wind Cave National Park, and once again, the cave tours are sold out. So um, we are going to take a little hike, and we're going to be going on the Cold Brook Canyon Trail. It's only about 1.4 miles each way, and it does go through a prairie dog town. Oh, and it has poison ivy. How fun. Ticks, flies, mosquitoes, and other biting insects. Yeah. And that was the the hike that you saw at the beginning where it had right. the poison ivy. And there it was, was a hike so to a, a uh, prairie dog town. But it really there wasn't was a, as many impressive. It wasn't as impressive no. as some of the others. There might seen. have been one prairie dog. 
Maybe and two maybe that we two. saw. And that was there it. was a lot of a lot of prairie dog holes, but they right. just weren't not, out not and about. So it was not my uh, hiking. Is I'm not a massive hiker anyway. It was not my favorite hike, but we did go. Um, it, it did have this one interesting place. Take a look. So apparently we have a poison ivy trap. Okay, we got poison ivy there. Poison ivy all around this rock. Right down at the bottom of it. And down at the bottom. But not over on this side. <sighs> but not over on this side. So, I'm going to walk around it. Yes. I called it the poison ivy trap. <laughs> okay. Um, so we did do that hike, and then we was out and back a mile or so. Uh, not any. Uh, it's not a strenuous hike, but I would suggest that if you have a, if you're a little less than sure-footed. Take a couple of walking sticks. I did not take my walking sticks. And there's one fairly steep section um, that you need to get down into the pasture area, this me big meadow um, where you do the actual hike through this little trail. Um, so, it, and it's a little steep going down and coming back up. So if you if you have them, grab some walking sticks yep. to do that with. Yeah, I think you'd be, be a little bit better off. On the way back, we happened to see another prairie dog town. There was lots of prairie dogs out, but what we noticed was there was two coyotes that were going through the prairie oh dog gosh. town, and they were just like t making the they were just making the prairie dogs completely bark. crazy. So li take a listen to this. You'll hear the prairie dogs freaking out as these two coyotes are trotting through their town. One of them actually stops to pee on the prairie dog. Just and then claiming he it as his own. Claiming it as own. But here's the deal. D did they not know it's broad daylight, Kylie? Well, I'm sure they did. I'm sure they were just messing with the They're prairie messing. dogs. It almost sounds like the prairie dogs are actually shouting, Coyote! 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 coyote, coyote. coyote. It was really funny. Anyway, it's like, what? No! You know, that's what they were doing. <laughs> what? Everybody run! You know, and, uh, and there was one that we could even see him. I don't think it's on the video. Maybe it is. The coyote stuck his nose in the prairie dog hole. Yeah. I'm hoping the prairie dog bit his nose. I don't know. I root for the prairie dogs. I know their food and it's important, but it was really <laughs> funny. And that was truly one of the that one, was the funniest. Of, one of the best animal encounters that we had along yeah. the way. So that was Wind Cave. Um, so here's a tip if you uh, plan to go to any national parks. Research and plan. Two things I didn't do very well. I did some, yeah. but not really like I should have. We just um, sort of winged it. Winged and it. sometimes that works really well. And this time the, it didn't work in, quite in, out. In the age of COVID, it's a little bit harder to do that. There, the, yeah. There's fewer people in on each of these tours. And so you just kind of have to plan ahead. Yeah. So, if so you, the tours if are smaller and there there's fewer of them. And so you, you just have to. Yeah. Make sure you understand how you can schedule the tour exactly. as well. Because exactly. some of them you could do online. Other ones you have to do in person. Right. And so it just is... is um, and and the, the, the instructions the are very clear online. I mean, they're very good. They're very good to tell you what roads are closed and what conditions are like in any of these national parks. So um, We just didn't read. <laughs> we just didn't pay very much attention. So, all right, let's move on. We stayed overnight in a KOA in Mitchell, and they were great. But we also stayed overnight at Belvedere, the Belvedere I-90 KOA. And this is where we had a really interesting experience. Um, it's about the only business around for miles and miles and miles. Yep. There is the, the, the locals come to the KOA to get pizza That's because right. the, they, they serve pizza at the That's KOA. That's right. And you can see here in this video, they have a full kitchen. I mean, they serve like serious food. In this, in this KOA, but pizza is their specialty and super nice people. Um, but here's what was so interesting. This park has screaming Wi-Fi. Scream like the fastest, fastest Wi-Fi we probably we saw ever in any seen park. In, certainly in any RV park. Yeah. And certainly in many homes. Take a look at this speed test. All right, let's go see what it looks like. smokes this is the download speed okay. 
campground Wi-Fi. This is like the most incredibly fast. There's the upload. That's the upload, people. That is upload speed. That is smoking. Over 100. And 30. Yeah. And there's the result. 59 and 132. It was a good stop. Um, is it as fancy as some? No. Just remember, if you need to stop along I-90 and you need some internet, go to the Belvedere KOA. They will, they will, they will, they will, they will scream and fast. Screaming fast. In Mitchell, we stopped at the Dignity Statue. And mm -hmm. this is a 50-foot uh, tall statue of a beautiful Native American woman holding a blue star quilt. And it's been something that's been on my list a long time because I've been a long time quilter. And I wanted to see this beautiful statue. And it is breathtaking. Um, it's at a rest area right yep. off of I-90 in Chamberlain, South and, Dakota. And there's also a, uh, it's a visitor center for the state. The Dignity Statue is definitely worth a stop. It's beautiful, and I'm very glad we had the chance to do that. I think that's going to do it. Yeah, I think that wraps up this video. All right. We're so happy that you're with us. This is uh, my little buddy here. So from us, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And press like and ring the bell to get notified. You bet. And until next time, restless friends, you take care. Bye.